G'day Trinchetters, Greg here again from Fish Plate Films. Sick of me yet? I am. Anyway, uh, today we're going to do a uh, crossover uh, on the two main lines that go up and down the helix. Now this crossover wasn't on the plans, but as I've been operating the layout, uh, it's become apparent that every now and then we need to get a train across in another direction. Now normally that wouldn't happen because it would go up the top and go down to the top yards and then come back down again, but occasionally uh, it would be nice to be able to turn a train. We can turn a train from east to west down here, but we can't get it back from west to east. Yeah, anyway, something like that. So I've got a couple of tilling turnouts here. There are probably a number, I don't know, might be a number six, maybe a little bit tighter. So they're not a high speed crossover, but they're, uh, they're a nice little turnout. So I'm going to put this crossover in as something that you wouldn't use all the time, but just some, you know, a crossover that uh, is there for not an emergency, but situations that might arise. And for the moment, because we don't have a top yard, it will become very handy because we keep getting trains the wrong direction, we can't get them back. So, um, the last time I did turn an installation, it was on the phone, and I'm getting really P-I-S-S-E-D off with this phone. It's just too soft. It's a great product, as I said, but it's too soft underneath the turnouts. And what I'm finding, and I think what may happen down the track when I ever ballast this bloody thing, is when you're cleaning the track, you don't need to put much pressure on it at all for the track to move. So every time that moves, it's gonna move the glue and dislodge a little bit of ballast. And actually a little bit like the real thing, if a track hasn't got a good foundation, it moves up and down on the ballast, all moves around, we call it pumping. And if you see somewhere where the ballast is really smooth, every time the train goes over, the track moves like that, and all the little individual bits of ballast move around and actually smooth themselves off and they come, be like, come like river rocks. So if you ever see that anywhere, you know the track is RS there because the ballast is jumping around. So, yeah, I don't like the foam to cut a long story short. So, I'm putting a, a turnout on some cork and I haven't showed you how I do that. So I know we all know how to do it, but anyway, we'll have a quick look, just a quickie, as the actress said to the bishop. And, uh, We'll put these two, this crossover on some cork and show you how to do that. Let's go. Now, what I've done, these two uh, turnouts are together with their insulated fish plates. I'll be changing them over to the, the dark insulated fish plates, they're just the uh, Pico ones. Did the two main straight bits of cork first, marked where the crossover was going, and then infilled with little scrap pieces. Now, now what I'm going to do next is give this just a light sand and uh, with one of these fine multi-tools, I use this quite a lot. Uh, unfortunately the patents run out and they're making them, other companies are making them in China now and they're crap. But if you can afford a fine multi-tool, good German engineering. Even better if I had it plugged in. for doing the edges to get that sharp edge. Arthur, see I'm sanding, I'm sanding, I'm sanding. Arthur gets upset. No, Arthur Houston, if you don't sand the edges there. It gives you a nice, a nice rounded edge for your ballast. You can't really see it with the on the camera, but it does make a huge difference if you just take that sharp edge off. Um, also, when you split this Midwest cork, which I love trendsetters, there may be a time in the future where this whole bottom level of this layout is changed over to Midwest cork because the foam is really giving me the irrits. Um, there is a, when you split the cork, there's a, a nice side that breaks off and there's a side with a lip on it. Well, the, I always put the side with a lip away that you can't see, and I don't bother sanding that because uh, you don't need to. Right, done. Now what I've done, I've put some uh, temporary pins here. This is another good thing about the cork. If you've watched the, the one on the phone, uh, it was a lot harder to put the turn out where you want it and then take it away so you can drill all the holes for the throw bar and everything and then put it back in the same spot because the phone moves so much. With the cork, I've just put a few temporary pins in here on the other side of the rail and I can just slip that, uh, slip that turn out 
drill the holes, put it back in where it is, and then spike it um, after we've put the drill the holes for the throw bar and our frog wire, which is um, up, up the other end. So, another good thing about uh, the cork, if you put the track in the middle, like I've done here, obviously, you get a center line straight away for your throw bar. So you know, know where to drill the throw bar. Right, you see our pins here, one of our temporary pin that's on the other side of the line. So if I just mark the center there, if I go straight across to that, now if I go straight across from this line and go in the middle of the midwest of the cork, then I know that's exactly where I need the hole for my throw bar. Now this is where uh, when you design your layout you make sure you leave enough space to work in if you have to. Uh, this isn't comfortable but at least I can get in here and, and do something. This is, uh, I don't know how much this is, above these two, I think about 400 or something. But you need enough to get in there and service things. Now also these tillings as I've said before are a very flexible turnout. You can actually bend them into a uh, almost a curved turnout, a slightly curved. So they do take quite a lot of a lining up uh, to get them spot on. But this is it. Once they're in and spiked in, they're, uh, they're very good. Just wish their sleeper spacing was US style. Why doesn't someone like, you know, Walters or Pico make a heelless spring switch in code 83. Why not? We've only had them for 20 frickin' years or longer. I don't know. So I'm marking both of these, each end, at the same time. Okay, I've got my turnout, uh, both turnouts lined up. I've also, I measured all the track spacing in the uh, centres before, so uh, when the two lots of cork are going down, uh, I know they're in the right spot. Now all the locating pins are on the far side of the rail, so now all I can do is just bring both turnouts this way, like that. Now I can drill my holes, and then I can just slide the turnouts back in against those pins, and remembering to uh, solder my feeder wires onto the frogs first before I put them back in. And then I can spike them down, and then the tortoise machines can go up from underneath. Now, I've uh, marked all my holes with my sharpie. Now also remember, as I said in the uh, episode many, many moons ago, when you're installing turnouts, make sure you've got room underneath for your tortoises. So there's no other woodwork or something there. So you can fit your tortoise machines in. Also, this, these, this crossover took quite a bit of uh, shuffling around to where I was going to put it because the grade starts just up here. So I had to make sure I got the turnouts in before I got too much of a change of grade. Remember it says you can put a turnout on a grade but you don't want a turnout to be going up a hill and then on a flat. It needs to be on the same plane. So this is just at the start of the grade which is about here so they just fit in. Now I couldn't put them up any further because there was timber underneath. I could have put them way up further but I think having them nice, nice and close this other crossover makes them look a bit, a bit better and nice and busy down here. Right now, we've got my cross there. I'll line it up there. Now, when you're drilling, you know, at holes, you have to be pretty accurate like this for your uh, throw bar. Start off with a small drill, put a pilot hole, th hole through, and then put a bigger one through. That way, you, uh, your big drill won't wobble off centre too much. And select the correct speed for the drill. Nice. Alright, we'll drill the others and um, then we'll chuck the turnouts back in. Now I've drilled all the uh, holes and I'm just about to put the two turnouts together. Now these are microengineering insulated fish plates and they're quite uh, a tight fit so what I've done is I've got a little bit of uh, rail here and I've just filed the end of it so it's uh, a nice point filed it on both sides and underneath. So it's like a wedge and I can fit it into these fish plates here and just sort of 
open them up a little bit because you try and push them on uh, straight away you'll end up uh, having a hard time and damaging the the fish plate and pushing the turd out of alignment like I just did on this one so you can see there whoops it also I also use it for the microengineering um, uh, nickel silver the metal fish plates because they're they're very uh, the very snug fit on the pico rail so that just helps ease them open a little it makes life a lot easier right we've got our crossover uh, connected and our two wires here for our frogs I always like to use different coloured wires to the frogs to the other uh, bus coloured wiring so you know when you're mucking around underneath if you're having problems that any feeds to your frogs are a different colour or even choose a colour that's specific to frogs that's probably an even better idea maybe green or brown if they're brown frogs okay so I'll ease that down there now remember we've got our locating pins all along here and uh, all along the other side down here, one there, where are we? another one there. Just uh, make sure these wires aren't going to get caught there. Maneuver these around a little bit because the wires are um, poking through. Nice. That's resting up our that's resting up against our locating pins along here. Resting up here. So I'll just do a quick eye line check there. And make sure she's all good. Right, we're in. We've got our temporary pin still here. And here. All on one side. So if they're on the uh, right hand side, they're on the right hand side. So you can slide the turnout in and it rests up all against one side, you're not trying to wrestle it in between pins on each side. And I'm happy with that, now I've got down at eye level and I've looked along this way to make sure the frog, once that's pinned down, is going to be flat. This is all flat through here, the other frog's flat here. Uh, any of the blades are sticking up, these tillings, as I've said before, are very fragile, they're quite difficult uh, to lay, especially if you've laid things like Walters or Pico turnouts, these are um, quite difficult and fiddly to lay and they're quite easily broken, or not broken, disassembled is probably the word, and just make sure they all uh, switch across there nicely, that's got to be pinned down, we've got two pins here now, this is in place holding them each way here, so I've looked at uh, eye level and I've looked up through here, that's called topping, and I've also put my head here and here at each end and looked along both ways along here and that's called line, so it's called top and line, so we've done top and line, that's very important, and I'm happy with that, so I'll spike that down now, and uh, we'll come back when it's all spiked down and all the rails are joined. Morning, afternoon, evening. Well, it's stand dark here, yeah? And why do I get the feeling that deja vu was upon us? Well, possibly because it is. And I've sat through this before, and may I say the time before was just as uh, unstimulating and nauseating as this particular time. But, well, here we are again, and we must trust that uh, we're inspired to carry on, and maybe learn a little bit more of the same thing, if that's possible. Uh, now, of course, when I read the title uh, about a crossing over, or crossovers, I thought it was something to do with drag queens and Mardi Gras, but, well, apparently I was incorrect. So, I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed part one of the uh, Mardi Gras, uh, sorry, of the uh, installing a crossover on the BNS of Burwood Subdivision, and um, I think now we can go and have a cup of tea, and uh, relax, and regain our composure, so uh, we can slip in, as the actress said to the bishop, uh, do part two and enjoy even more uh, gratuitous entertainment from uh, Greg and Fishback Films. So this is Lord Stan saying um, bon voyage and have a cup of tea and we will see you uh, in part two.